Uh, welcome back everyone. Today we have a very special guest on the channel today. Today I'm interviewing Shai Matheson. He is the voice actor for Savando in Dragon Quest XI and I was fortunate enough to be able to talk to him. So I have Shai with me here today. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Uh, sure, thanks for having me. Alright, so um, today we're just going to talk a little bit about your career and uh, mostly we're going to talk about Dragon Quest XI and your role as Silvando, which has captivated yep. a lot of people and uh, he's gained quite a uh, quite a bit of uh, fan base as well. Mm, yep. I know, I can't believe it. It's been so many years and still he keeps on giving. I know, it's been two years since you uh, first, two, two, three years since you first got the role. Two bit, yeah. 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 Well, since it came out, I guess, right? It came out two and a bit years ago. It came out in 2018. I should know this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. At least I got that right. Um, but yeah, I got the role a little bit earlier than that. And then, yeah, and then he came out. And that was a big, big revelation to see how it's been received. Yeah. So um, how did this whole thing happen? Like, how did you get the role? And how did, like, every uh, this whole thing start? Um, I got the role by auditioning for it. Um, and that was about mid 2017. It was a funny one, actually. I think uh, I I went up for two roles. I went up for Silvando, and I went up for Prince Faris, Faris mm -hmm. or Ferris. I hope it's Ferris. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I kind of assumed I'd get Prince Ferris. I was more right for Prince Ferris. I mean, I never assume I'm going to get a part, but I thought of the two, I'd probably get prince ferris and then sylvando was such a an out there character that which is something that i love doing but you never know with those things so you just take a chance and do something crazy and and go oh, okay that's a bit of lottery um but i'll get the one that i'm sort of more maybe on paper suited for um but then sylvando happened which was amazing i mean it was quite yeah it was quite a an interesting audition process and we can get into that later if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, so Prince Ferris, that's the one you were kind of interested in or the one you thought you would get. Oh, why do you think? I thought so, yeah. Yeah, why why do you think you'd get Prince Ferris and not a Silvando? For a completely stupid reason. I have Middle Eastern blood in me and this sort of pitch for Prince Ferris was he was a Middle Eastern sounding prince. Um, and I thought, well, that, that's, that's easy. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I assumed I'd get that over the other um but secretly i knew i'm more sylvando right and uh <laughs> so uh with prince Ferris, uh i mean with the audition how was the process like did you have to you read lines did you have to do certain accents for the mm. for the role or so the, yeah they send you usually i mean every every game is a little bit different but on the whole they send you a little breakdown of the character if you're lucky you get a picture as well which is very very helpful for you to sort of think about how you want to pitch it and you know when you see what a character looks like it does really inform how you how you act it out um especially in games <clears throat> and um so yeah so you get a little breakdown you get a picture of it and then sometimes there's more detail and sometimes there's less but with this one i think the accent was sort of already suggested um and i think that's the world building of the game because i guess where he's from that's the accent. I mean, obviously, Don Rodrigo speaks the same way, and I guess other people in where he's from. <clears throat> and with Prince Faris, for example, Faris, God, I'm going to say it wrong every time. Um, I guess that was more of a desert kind of town, more of a sultan feel. So I guess all the accents around there were Middle Eastern. So I guess the people, the, when they localized the game, the world building was such that they predetermined the accents. Um, I'm going into too much detail here, probably. Um, but yeah, so the accent was suggested, and then I just kind of did a th my take on it, um, and it seemed to work. Later for the game itself, we didn't obviously want to go into too much accent stuff, so if my version of, I guess, a South American accent was a bit too South American, then we'd kind of tone it down so that it's more understandable or that it's never a problem of what did he just say because the accent is faithful but no one can get the dialogue so we found a little middle ground of of that but i kind of based it on characters that i had grown up hearing and and i spoofed it off of a couple of characters that i'd seen before yeah 
Oh, really? So uh, which characters? I'm interested in knowing uh, what characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it isn't directly based on it. I, th I remember there was like one episode because they're all it's often easy to get into an accent by going to the extreme of it and then pulling it back. Um, I remember there were two characters on Seinfeld. Did you ever watch Seinfeld? Yeah. I was the two armoire robbers. Um, oh, what were they called? They were part of the Van Buren gang, I think, as well. Any, they, anyway, they were um, kind of flamboyant and amazing, but they were robbers, and I loved that contrast, and they were very extreme and out there. I'm so tempted to do the voices, but I'll probably mess it up. Um, and then um, a little bit of it was Hank Azaria in The Birdcage. Oh, really? Um, but that's extreme, 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 extremes. And then I just took it to somewhere that's a bit more normal. I see. So sometimes you, you went a little too far and they were like, oh, tone it down a little bit. Mm. That happened. Well, even before we started, because obviously even looking at the character before I even did the game, it doesn't come across as that. So those were voices that I liked doing. They were in my arsenal. Like I'd like to do them as a joke or just because I liked the performances when I saw them and it stuck with me. It didn't obviously fit this character, but it influenced what I would do choose to do later on i see so yeah you don't come in and, and start sort of pitching the the voices that are in your head but you go okay i i have this in my arsenal i'm looking at him he looks a bit like this to me and what what comes out it's like a mix like a concoction of certain elements with different dosages and something comes out but i mean the final result obviously came out of working with the director pitching it in different levels and playing around with it i see um, i see yeah yeah mm. and obviously with him especially we never wanted to go into any direction that was too extreme in terms of you know making him any kind of caricature we really actually wanted to make him very very lovable and normal and just someone that is very confident in who they are and just is who he is and in that sense we never wanted him to sound like any kind of caricature just something fabulous i think i actually looked it up before we were speaking i looked up my the first email i got about the audition for him and i think it said some somewhere in there that he's just uh, i can't remember what exactly it was i just lost it here but something like he embraces how fabulous he is and that's that's a big guiding thing for Silv, i guess Mm. And uh, so would you say that you like um, improvised at all with the character or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it's very little you can improvise in terms of obviously every little bit of the of the cutscenes is set in the in the Japanese. We already had an existing game, as it were, and we had to do the English version of it. So there's not too much you can improvise. And uh, and the the text is what it is. A lot of times we would change the text, not a lot of times, but sometimes we would change the text as we were recording um, to fit a little bit more of what maybe we came up with as a character. So, you know, if on day one, I was one thing as Silvando, by day five, I'd found a rhythm and a voice to him and it's sort of character that was maybe a little bit different to what I came up with in the audition or started on day one. You know, it's quite organic. You build up to what you end up as a result. So we did tweak a couple of things and change a couple of things to, to suit what we did. Um, yeah, I mean, I did sometimes improvise things on the spot. Um, I'm a little bit silly. And so a lot of times I'd get carried away. So I'd say a certain line, and then I'd give another version of that line with something added in that I thought might be funny. Oftentimes I would think it was just a joke for me and the director and the people in the room. But sometimes that would stick and stay in the game. Um, and some of the sounds, some of the yoo-hoos and some of the, uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that stuck that I was quite surprised and happy that got to stay in. I see. So, like, some of, like, the little screams and, like, the little, uh, little eccentric. Oh, definitely the scream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was always a little bit eccentric. And that's that was in the Japanese, in the animation. So, you know, you, you look at the animation. There's only so much you can change when the animation is already set to be 
a certain thing, you know, and if if in the animation he's all like wide armed and and fabulous, you can't go, oh, and I, I think this is the voice I'm gonna use for Silvando. You know, you have to you have to meet it at some point. Um so he was always a little bit big and fun and and up there and I just had a bit more fun with it and where I thought it was more fun to have a you who or a, or or any scream I can't remember what they are now but um yeah I would just throw it in where it felt natural I think it just comes comes in the moment that sounds so actory it comes to you in the moment and then you do it but yeah there was definitely a lot of play that's why I loved doing it so much because I did get to play around with him so much and and try different things and you know oftentimes you you do the line try a couple of things and then you end up going well actually the first time i did it was the best sometimes it's the third time and the thing that you tried and the director i worked with john was so great at just letting me try different things trusting me that i know what the character is and and letting me explore and that's that's great to have yeah and uh, speaking of like trying different things, he, uh, Salvando mm. has sort of like different personas. Like he has like a serious mm. kind of voice and uh, like a superhero yeah. voice. And like, a, wh- <laughs> how did those come about? Um, again, just according to whatever was needed to tell the story. So like I said earlier, it, the most important thing, and I know it sounds like such a cliche, was um, to not make him a cliche. And so for every time that he's extra flamboyant and extra fabulous, have a moment where he has a real heart. And I mean, he always has a real heart, even when he's flamboyant. That's not to say. But, uh, you know, just have him be a real person that doesn't just perform. Because I find I feel like, you know, characters that just perform all the time are hiding something. They're not real. And I think with him, he really wears his heart on his sleeve. And so... We see him in the moments where he's fabulous and and big and bold. And we have the moments where he's really heartfelt. And I think uh, I think some of it also was just me liking to 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 do a big performance. So, for example, I think there was a, a, a section where he hides his face and he pretends to be Don Silva. Am I, am I correct? The Sterling Silva. Uh, that was uh, yeah. The Sterling Silva. That's yeah. it. That was just me wanting to do Antonio Banderas basically. I see. So I thought, well, how can we change his voice to sound like something different? So that's just me fooling around and having some fun while the character needed to just pretend to be someone else. So yeah, these things come organically. But the most important, if I'm repeating myself, I do apologize. But the most important thing was to to try and make him be as real as possible and and just be someone that really is aware of when he performs, but does it because he's happy to perform, not because he needs to hide who he really is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Mm. It's a very interesting insight into the character. So, um, mm. You, you, you typically when you get a role do you typically like really like dive deep into what the character is like feeling and all that when you when you try to perform um it depends you you know i guess a game is quite a linear not a linear sorry like a binary entity where you go you have this choice or you have that choice and how, whatever choice you make as the player i guess um that's what the character is going to be and so in a way, it's very binary. So there's not too much freedom, um, obviously, in, in, a, in a game like this, where the game already exists before you start creating the character, you are limited to what what's already there. As opposed to, so if I created that character from scratch and it wasn't even drawn or, you know, the Japanese version didn't exist, it would maybe be a different thing. Um, but I had to see what's there in the Japanese version and and sort of put my twist on it, put the English twist on it. Um, I mean, obviously, there were great people um, translating the game. So they did all the heavy lifting and I just had to come in there and do the voice with a bit of insight to what it might feel like in that situation. And yeah, that's where you put a bit of insight as an actor to, you know, I think if, uh, if, uh, if he's in this situation, he might choose to do this and that. Um, so you do have a little bit of input in that, but I feel like I've completely forgot what your question was, but I, I went on a rant there. It's all right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, mm. um, 
So you, you uh, how was the recording session like for the whole the whole thing? Like, what was the process? Um, in terms like technically, you mean or uh, yeah, you mean yeah, like uh, I mean, I guess yeah, you go into the studio. Uh, there's a director there. There's an engineer. Um, we had uh, Ollie, who's one of the team at Schlock that translated the game, um, who wrote most of it, and J- another John who was on the line from Japan, who worked, um, I guess, with the games company. God, that's a long time ago. I might be wrong on that. Um, And then you have the ready sort of whatever's decided for the day uh, on the screen. And and, and with a game like this, as opposed to, say, um, Cyberpunk or anything that is still in the works, with, with Dragon Quest, the game was kind of ready. So we could do all the scenes uh, on the screen uh, with whatever animation was already set. And then you'd get a feel for what the scene was. And then you just say the line in, in English. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you'd get you get the little scene shown to you on the screen with the text in front of you. And then you just do your version for whatever feels right. The lucky and nice thing, which is a bit of a cheat, um, with Dragon Quest is the lips don't move. So you essentially have a freedom to do quite a lot. If the lips were very specific and the moves were very specific, it would be harder. So I had a lot of freedom there. So yeah, you just do that. You, you do a couple of lines for a couple of takes for each line. If you like what you do, you carry on. If you don't like what you do, you tweak it. And yeah, that's I how see. it works. I see. So you were like looking at a TV screen with the character talking and you were just kind of matching up with them? Yeah. And then obviously the director and the guys would give you a little breakdown of what was happening before or after so that you know where you are, get your bearings in the game. But obviously there's so many different options and um, scenes in the game. You'd never be able to know where you are in the order of things. And obviously the order of things depends on what the player selects. Um, or if they've even selected you. So there's never a way. It's not like a film where it's very linear and you would know exactly what's happening and it's a deter- predetermined thing. A game has many options. Um, not that many in the case of Dragon Quest, I guess. But yeah, you kind of know, you get a bearing of, of the scene and then act it out the way you think it should be done. I see. So mm. how, how long was this uh, the timeline, you would say, like from beginning to end? Like how long did it take to record the entire game? Oh, wow. Um, for me, obviously, I'm only one of many characters. I think it was a few, maybe two months that I did all my bits um, spread over, you know, a few times. Uh, so not every day for two months, but like, you know, twice a week, twice a week, twice a week. I can't really remember um until the first uh iteration was done and then i think we came back to do some of the extended version um yeah i think two months i might be wrong on that i probably need to check but it feels like it was about two months i see and this was in in 2017 you did these uh the voice lines Mm. yeah it always takes so long between when you do the recording and when the game comes out of course, the whole time you can't say anything to anyone about anything and no one knows, you know, I've had games that came out and um, then realized a friend was in the same game, but we obviously wouldn't be able to say that to each other. So that's fun. Oh, really? But yeah, you do, wait, you do wait a long time between when the game, uh, when you record it and when the game comes out. Probably less time in the case of Dragon Quest because, like I said, it's already there. The animation's already done. It, it's just a translation. I think maybe, but you probably know more than me. I think at that point, the game might have just come out in Japan or it was even coming out as we were recording it, the Japanese version. You probably know the dates better than I do. Yeah, um, it was mid-2017. It was like, um, it was in the summer 2017 was when it came out in Japan. There you go. Yeah, so it would have been exactly that. I think it came, I think I remember coming into the studio on the day that it came out in Japan or something, obviously being aware that it's so, such a huge, huge thing in Japan. Um, no thanks to me, obviously, or any of the other actors in the English version. 
well, yeah, because the original version didn't actually even have voices. It was just people talk, mm. talking, mouths moving, no voices coming out. Uh, so you are the first person to portray the character uh, in any sort of media. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, the the uh, the extended version that came out afterwards had Japanese voice actors, but that was the first version of the game that had uh, Japanese voice actors. So, yeah. That's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. It's such a different thing. I've done a couple of games that were... Um, other other games that were translation from Japanese and it's such a different uh sound and such a, I mean even just for the speed of things I, I know when you try and, and fit like a Japanese like a translation to a Japanese line they're so much more efficient and quick in their lines and a lot of times when you try and translate them to English you have to really try and fit a lot to a very very small space that's just an insight to translating games from Japanese. I can imagine it's pro probably really mm. complicated. Um, mm. So uh, when the when the extended version was coming out, uh, they brought you back in to do more more voice lines for the because there's an extra scene where he's like you yeah know, on his own. Just a few more. I think it was him on his own. It might have been. I, I might be wrong here. It was a couple of years ago. Um, I think there was a little bit more to do with his hometown. Uh, and then definitely uh, the ending. But am I spoiling anything by saying that? Do you think people listen to this who haven't played the game yet? Most people have played it at this point. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. It was a bit of the ending scenes, and and um, yeah, I probably shouldn't say anymore. But yeah, it was a, a little bit more content. Obviously, not the volume of um, a recording that we did the first time around. But it was a thrill to come back to it because I think by then it, the game had come out. And so I was aware that it was pretty well liked. And so it was really nice to just revisit it and and just do the character again. I think it was a year after I finished. So it was just so nice to do visit Sylvando again. I see. So it was like in, in late 2018 they uh, brought you back in? I guess, but this is completely me guessing. And I can't remember. I could check that, but it would bore everyone to death. Um. I, I think, yeah, I think it, it was after the game came out and then we had to do a bit more recording. Um, I think that's how it was. But again, I get confused. It's, I'm not young. Yeah, it's fine. It, it, it's just <laughs> interesting because uh, there's a lot, always a lot of questions about what the timeline is like mm. and how long it takes. So that, that kind of question always pops up. It takes forever. There's some games that I've done that have, I mean, it, there's one game I think that's coming out next year that I did. And we recorded it two years ago. So I don't know what takes, like, things take a long time. But again, it depends on, it depends on what kind of game it is. Yeah, because some, some games come out um, and they have, they come out in Japan and in, in America at the same time in, mm. in, in the West. Um, so it, I guess it's just a rights issue or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think with Dragon Quest, and I might, again, I might be wrong. You know more than me on this, but it's such a, huge entity in japan and it's such a i guess a, a a national treasure in japan that it's a mainly a japanese game and then you do the english version almost as a bonus and then obviously it has its fans outside of japan um but it is a real big important thing in japan so i think that's the main thing that the company considers when they do the game and they release it and then the translation is a bonus. Whereas if you design a game for an international international market, I guess it's a little different sometimes. But I only do the voices. I don't know. So what do you mean by a bonus? Like, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that? As in the game was set when we did it. And then, uh, so it is set to be what it is. It has the Japanese flair to it. It has the Japanese way of being, the Japanese way of writing, and the Japanese scenes, all the characters. And then the game is already ready when when we get to the translation in this one specifically, whereas other games are initially designed to be in English. But I think Dragon Quest is a very Japanese game. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, that's why it's so successful there. Mm. So, um, so while you were uh, while you were um, doing your recording sessions, you didn't meet any of your co-stars on the on the game, did you? sometimes you kind of again we're all very coy about what we do because we're not allowed to say anything so 
<clears throat> I, I would only know if someone in the waiting room was waiting to be uh, in the game because the director would be would introduce us and go, oh, by the way, that's uh, Lauren who plays Veronica. Um, but I think actually Lauren is the only one that I actually met and was introduced to. And then I saw a couple of people later, I realized, oh, God, yeah, of course, they're playing this guy or this guy. Um, but yeah, you don't really interact at all. Sometimes you hear their voices in the studio um, while you're recording because they've already recorded maybe the, the line that feeds your next line. So obviously then they'd play that line to feed you in. And that's really helpful. But yeah, you oftentimes wouldn't even know um, who's in the game or what. I found out one of the guys, uh, Matthew, who plays Jasper, um, him and I did a radio play a few years before that. And I only found out he was Jasper after the game came out. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's all very secretive. Yeah, I can imagine because uh, this is like there's a lot of uh, secrecy with uh, regards to like releasing and getting these translated and everything. Yeah, I, there's secrecy with every game these days. I mean, I've just now it's not a secret. I can say that I've, I've just I'm in cyberpunk and the secrecy around that was so intense. Like you wouldn't, you're not allowed to say anything to anyone, even if you know someone is in the game uh, and you know them, you're not allowed to talk about it. Really? So uh, what, sign away your life. What character do you play in cyberpunk? I play a few characters. I play, I, I play like tons of characters in cyberpunk. Um, I play a guy called Tom. I play a guy called Teddy uh, a guy called Shai Tan, which was exciting because that's my name almost. Yeah. Um, and then a bazillion other characters, but I won't say anything more about those because that might be spoilers because it's so new. Yeah. But yeah, I play tons of small characters in cyberpunk that are spread throughout the game. And then a couple of slightly less small, but still small. That's interesting. Uh, mm. So, any other games you've uh, voiced characters in besides uh, this? <clears throat> I mean, my favorite would obviously be this. Yeah, um, Sylvanda was definitely my uh, biggest and and nicest one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's quite a few games. The recent ones, um, I did the replicated version of Nomad in Ghost Recon. So it's essentially Nomad, who is the the main character of the game. If you play it as two people, as two nomads, uh, then I would be the second nomad, <clears throat> which I actually love because this is going off topic. But um, Silvando is probably if you took two, if you had to choose two extremes in video games, it will be Silvando and then the main guy in Ghost Recon. But I loved that I got to do both because Sylvander was so big and flamboyant and like up there and basically Ghost Recon was the whole game being like this guy who constantly talks like this the whole time and so I loved that I loved that contrast but that's only fun to me I see that's a lot of range <laughs> yeah it's exactly the upper bit of my range and the lower bit of my range um yeah that was really fun so that was the i think the last one that came out before cyberpunk was ghost recon um i did a game called bleeding edge um that came out this year i think at the beginning of the year i played a character called zero cool there um i had so much fun doing that one he is essentially um a Brazilian teenager uh, who's a computer hacker, um, but so much fun. So in a, a, in a funny way, he's a little bit like Sylvander where he loves to perform and he loves to be different people and do different voices and, and just doesn't care. Um, am I allowed to swear on this? Probably not, right? It's okay. It's, um, you, it's YouTube. <laughs> you can bleep this out. Yeah. Um, so I love doing him and, um, and again, it was another case where the director, Matt, would, would let me improvise and do crazy things in, in the session. And then if something was really good, we'd, we'd let it stick. And the guys from the game would be on the line or sometimes in the studio. And they'd be like, yeah, we really like that. Let's change it. Let's do it like that. Um, but yeah, I, I love playing characters. So for every Ghost Recon that I do where there's no sort of place to, to fool around because it's very serious, 
I love doing the other characters where I get to be a child or a clown, you know, which is essentially what I am. Um, and I get to play around and do different voices and, um, and just be stupid. That's interesting. So, mm. so, um, uh, going back to Salvando, um, mm-hmm. so, um, recently, or this was last year, this, uh, this Japanese gaming magazine called Famitsu, which is like the biggest gaming magazine in the whole Japan. Mm. It's like 30 years old. It's like really, really like, well, everyone reads it there. Yeah, they had a, a poll to see who the most popular character in Dragon Quest XI was, and so Vondo won by a really large margin, like a huge margin. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, before, so this is ex, ex, uh, exposing my ignorance. Is that in the Japanese version, or is that the version that I did? Uh, they, they had it, uh, a special uh, international poll where everyone in the, around the Ooh. whole world could vote. So that's the result. Fine, I'll take it. Yep, everyone in the world said that. So, yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Like, I'm I'm blown away by it because, well, obviously, I've never done a character that was, until Silvando, that was so big. Um, he was my first big character. And just the fact that here we are two and a bit years after the game's already come out, and we're still talking about him, and people still love him, and, you know, you get these polls and things. It's so amazing, and in a game that's so big uh, and loved by so many people, like Dragon Quest, it's or the franchise, not the specific game. It's Yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing. I, I'm, I'm so grateful for it, and I'm, I can't believe it sometimes. And I tell you what, it wasn't like we didn't know it was going to be like that when we did it because we always, we being us in the game, um, us, uh, in, in the studio doing the game, we, we knew we loved Silvando and we wanted him to be super special. And we knew he was quite an extreme character. You know, he's a lot more extreme than anyone else in the game. Um, and we knew people would either hate him or love him. And we were all in love with him, but we hoped that people would love him. And the fact that they did in the end was was not an obvious thing. We we really didn't know. We thought people might not know how to take it. Um, and so it's so validating and great to know that people completely understood what we meant, that he is so full of love and uh, and so sort of uh, in control of who he is and so confident. That's a bit actory. But yeah, does that make sense? I yeah, it does. Obviously went, went off topic again. But yeah, so it's amazing to hear polls like that because, but I, I have to say, you know, and it's obvious and it's not just um, lip service. It really isn't just me. I mean, I did the voice. Someone else already thought of what the character was. And, uh, you know, the guys at Schlock who did the translation, they were the ones who came up with the script. And John, the director, was the one who had you know, the full insight of how all the characters in the game interact and what their sort of unique selling points, as it were, were. So I'm a little part of that big machine that created this thing. But I'll take the compliments. Thank you very much. Yep. So uh, have you had, like, any good interactions with your fans since you were in Dragon Quest XI at all? Um, I don't... Yeah, I mean, fans in, in video game world are on Twitter, right? Yeah. So that's that's what you get. I'm very bad. I try I'm trying to be better now. I never go on Twitter. It confuses me. Um so I do so yeah, especially since that came out, I'd get mentions and I'd get uh you know, people talking about it and that was incredible. So I guess the extent of the interaction is there. Um I mean just yesterday actually someone um, tagged me in a post on Instagram who uh, did a cosplay of Silvando and that's cool. And you, you, you do see how much it means to people and it's great. Like you, you never think when you're in the studio doing a silly voice, silly in, in brackets, that in parentheses, sorry, that, um, uh, that people are going to be so moved by it or so attached to it. And, and it's great because again, like I said, we all loved him so much and but you never know that people are actually going to follow up or or respond in the same way that you intended so it's great it's great to see again like we said two and a bit years after if if i search 
Solvando. I don't really actually do it often. It sounds like such a megalomaniac thing to do. But sometimes for work, you do. If you search Silvando on Twitter, I mean, it's the amount of love is unbelievable. Um, so yeah, it's it's incredible. All right, yeah, that's uh, that's a great experience, I imagine. You know, mm, it's nice for something that you had so much fun doing as well. Yeah. So, um, anything else? Anything you like about Dragon Quest Eleven? Like, or any characters you like besides Silvando? Um, I yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't play. This is um, this is a thing. I really should play for work. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't. I don't need to. But essentially what I'm saying is if I played, I would never leave the house because I'm already uh, addicted to watching TV and um, I have too much going on. And if I started playing, I don't think I would ever see daylight. So I'm actively stopping myself from playing. Um, so I've never played Dragon Quest. I have obviously um, seen a lot of clips uh, of the game and obviously seen a lot of stuff in the studio. And I, yeah, you know, the characters are amazing. I mean, everyone in this game is just so perfectly pitched and and such a cool character. Um, so never actually played, obviously, with any of them. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you who's like a favorite because... I, that would be a difficult choice. I loved the interactions. I loved, obviously, as Silvando, uh, the fact that he teases Hendrik all the time, who is probably the opposite of him, very serious and very, um, you know, very stern. Uh, I loved having to play with that or seeing it come 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 out after uh, how Silvando teases him all the time and and tries to sort of rile him up. Um, I loved Rab, I have to say. I still remember there's a, there's a bit in the game where Rab drops uh, his bag or like a, a dirty magazine comes out of his bag or something. Still remember that. That made me laugh so much. Oh, and also um, Dave, who is Sylv's um, friend, uh, that was... Uh, our director played that john so that's like i have a very soft spot for dave because he just makes me laugh because he reminds me of john yeah mm. interesting so uh any uh favorite lines that savando gave any equipment or anything <laughs> that's such a hard question a because i don't remember but also b because there's so many i mean i do remember some things but there's so many and it's been a while um, I kind of just like the whole essence of him. I mean, you know, things that kind of come to mind are like Chow for now, or uh, there's like I, I love there's a little bit in the ship where there's a misunderstanding about something. I think he says, um, uh, are any of you big bad boys named Kai? Something like that. I remember that for some reason. There was bits where I got to imitate other people, which is, which I liked a lot. So it's funny. I, I already play a very over the top character in Silvando. And then I loved within that to go even further and play other people while I'm being Silvando. So if we have the Sterling Silva or when he imitates Michelle at some point. Um, yeah, just stupid things like that. But anything, all the little whoopsies and all the little yoo-hoos and all the little um, darlings and honeys and just whatever made him fun. I see. Yeah, That's, That's a disappointing answer, isn't it? Uh, no, it's, it's, a good, it's a good answer because it's hard to choose. It's hard to choose whether it's your favorite It is really ones. hard to choose. Yeah. I can tell you genuinely, and this isn't lip service, I genuinely had so much fun while doing it. And it was just like every day was like me coming into the studio, being paid for just having a great time and having fun and just kind of being stupid and trying different things and trying different voices and things that made me laugh that ended up making other people laugh in the session and then hopefully made other people laugh afterwards in playing the game. So like, that's very lucky. So the whole thing was fun. You know, there's nothing about him that, that really isn't fun. And even the bits that were a bit serious, you know, there's moments where he's, you know, having a heart to heart with another character. That's fun as well, because it's such a different thing to what he is 
the rest of the time that you really enjoy sort of peeling back the curtain and seeing the real Silvando. I see. Hmm. So, um, I'm not sure what else to talk about. I think that, uh, we can maybe wrap this up if you'd like. Uh, yeah. are there any future roles that you're uh, doing that you think people should look out for? Um, you know, like I said before, we're not allowed to ever say anything about, um, future stuff. So there's a few things that are coming up that will come up. Um, if anyone follows me, um, I don't know why they would, cause I'm so boring on Twitter. Um, but yeah, as soon as stuff comes out, I will say, I guess the most exciting thing was to be a part of cyberpunk. That's the most recent thing. Um, so that's just come out. Um, yeah, there's a couple of other things in the pipeline, but I can't say anything at all. So that's boring, isn't it? Yeah, what, what's your Twitter account so everyone can follow you? It's uh, Shy Matheson, all one word. Um, but I'm sure somehow you will post that on yours and then people can follow that. But it's Shy Matheson, S H A I M A T H E S O N. Um, yeah. Right. I'm a lot more active on Instagram, but I guess I need to get on Twitter more. Yeah, they're both they're both good uh, platforms. So I'll, everyone, make sure you follow hmm. Shy on uh, Instagram <laughs> and, uh, and on Twitter, so you can. You keep... might be disappointed. I'm really sorry, but yeah, it's okay. Make sure. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, talking to me today. I really appreciate the interview. This is a great interview. And no, thank you. It was a real opportunity to uh, sort of just pay back and say thank you to everyone. This genuinely so much love out there for Silvando um, and I'm taking a little bit of that to me but it is not me it's Silvando and it's so amazing whenever you do go and have a look at what people are saying and like I've never seen anything like it. it's so so positive and it's such a stupid thing to say that it is what the actual character Silvando wanted which was to spread joy and smiles but like it actually is happening and I think people respond to Silvando in a way that we couldn't have hoped to be any better. So yeah, so thank you to everyone that likes Silvando and thank you for wanting to speak to boring old me. Okay, well, th uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this uh, interview with Shy and uh, we'll see you all next time. <laughs>